Grand Rising everyone, Ali coming to you live, Spirit and Coffee, got my coffee here. Mm-hmm. Yum O. So delicious. So okay, let's get started. We're in the Emerald Tablet and um, Alchemy for Personal Transformation. Um, and we started talking about breath and how the breath is a critical to our healing, to our transcendence. Um, and there's magic in the breath, the in and the out. Um, and letting go of all of the carbon dioxide in our body um, and inhaling some healthy oxygen to heal us. And so that's where we left off. Um, so we did talk about thought uh, presides over the wing of the heart um, and determines uh, the final judge uh, is what they say, who weighs the individual's true words, innermost intent and their thoughts and actions. So their innermost intent and their uh, true words. So the true words, what they mean is what are the true words in terms of what are you speaking and are you staying in integrity? Now, for me, integrity is spirit, mind, body alignment when everything is interconnected. Hey, Baram, how are you? Um, where everything is interconnected. And so when spirit, mind, and body are all interconnected and they align into the oneness that um, our intentions then are led pure, purely. Okay, so we can tell when something is off. Literally listening to people and watching their behaviors or listening to their words and seeing what they do. People will tell you who they are by the things that they do, not by the words they say. So when our words and our actions are aligned, we're in spiritual integrity. So we know that people are living their contract when they say it. Now, I'm not saying people don't fall off. It happens, right? We say something and then we go maybe the opposite direction. It's just being able to recognize it. There's nothing right, wrong, good or bad about it, but to be able to be honest with yourself, to be able to be self-reflective and say, oh, okay, I'm going this direction. It doesn't mean you can't change your mind right? We're not so rigid. We're flexible. We're, you know, we move, we change. We have different ways of viewing the world at times. And sometimes we don't have the information that perhaps we needed to see this thing fully or in its entirety. And sometimes we change and shift and that's okay. But intention behind the word is really critical. So we always start with the internal declaration. What do we declare to be so? And the declaration is really um, one of the most important processes in us creating our own personal contracts, our contracts with people and how we live into them. So when we say, you know, I declare that I am love and I am love and light. And my intention is to share this love and light with the, with people. And that looks like what? Spirit and coffee. So now let's just say something was off, right? Spirit, mind, body, or emotion, something was off. I wouldn't be living in integrity. My words would be empty. So our words and the application and the way that we live into our words, when they don't match, we're out of integrity. When they do match, we're living in integrity. Here's a, another key to manifestation. That's the key. Not just saying the words, not just thinking them so much that we want them. That's not it. Our actions have to align with it. So there's some movement in it as well. We don't just utter things and then boom, it happens. There's some kind of emotion. There has to be a actual movement in that direction. So as we see that our thoughts are are thoughts and then our speech and then our actions but people do this backwards and sometimes what we do is we we internally say oh I want I really want to do this thing but our actions are saying otherwise sometimes you just got to be honest with yourself that's all it takes like I really don't want to do that obviously because I'm not <laughs> I'm not doing the thing like meditation is one of the things, right? I would be like, I'm meditating for 30 minutes and I put it down and I would never do it. And I'm like, Natalie, just be honest with yourself. 
what is it that you are doing? Let's look at the actions that you have right now. What is it that's natural for you? Well, I like to go to the gym. I like to dance, right? My meditation is like putting on music and getting lost in the music, dancing and movement um, or Kung Fu, right? I love my Kung Fu. So doing those practices are what align with me. It's okay to change your practice. You don't have to fit in the mold. I know everybody talks about meditation all the time. It's such a popular thing. And yet some people are like, yeah, I'm going to meditate for, you know, 15 minutes a day and they never get to it. Well, okay, maybe that is not your practice and that's okay. So your words aren't aligning with your actions. So look at your actions, take an inventory. What are you doing daily? What is it that you're up to? Now, the stuff that you know is not helping you get to your divine purpose, those things I would say, okay, how do I transition? Now, I'm not going to say that here's where people go and they they sort of fall short. They want to do it all right away. This was me. Okay, I'm not saying everybody's like this, but do it all right away and it happened overnight. That's not how it works. This type of work doesn't just happen overnight. Okay, it builds upon each other and there's transitions between each phase. So that's part of alchemy is the transition. So you're looking at what do you transition? If you're spending too much time on social media, just zoning out and you know it's taking way too much of your time. Okay, well, maybe you're aware of that, but that doesn't mean that you cut it all out at once. It's not going to work. See, you're going to just go back into the same habits again. Okay. So what do you do? You transition from one thing to another. And this is actually done. I work in tobacco cessation. So people that smoke, this is actually what happens when uh, we talk to people who are wanting to quit. It's not an overnight thing because it's one of the hardest things to quit is smoking. It's literally one of the hardest things to quit. Harder than heroin, harder than believe it or not. And the last thing to go when people are getting over addiction. So it's super hard, but the transition in between is what's important. The support that you're getting in between. So if you're saying social media, which is another addiction, that's very hard to get over. Trust me, it's super hard. <laughs> I zone out too myself. I'm addicted, right? Had to come to that realization that damn, I'm just sometimes I'm zoning, zoning out to this. Why? Stop it. So I put something in place of it. And when I recognize it, so again, it's a transition from one to the other. And we take those transitions and we allow ourselves into new practices, things that are going to support us to get closer to our divine purpose, our divine birthright, or whatever it is, our goal, whatever it is that we're trying to do. So it's a transition phase. It doesn't just happen. Um, so for instance, with coffee at one point, I was like, I need to cut down on coffee. I love coffee, but I can't be drinking coffee all day. That's not healthy, right? One cup a day, good. Uh, five cups a day, probably not so good. So the transition, um, I found something to substitute that was healthy. So try tea, right? Herbal teas. Okay. That's one thing. Or number two, it could be a dandy blend. And um, that's, you know, a substitute for the coffee. So looking at those substitutes, looking at how to transition between the two. Okay. So when you're doing your practices and you're saying, okay, I am committed to understanding deeper the esoteric wisdom, um, but I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, this thing's re misdirecting me or it's directing me into conversations that I don't want or I have this relationship and it's not working out. I need to figure something out. How do I transition away from maybe toxic relationships that I'm addicted to? Because that happens as well. Okay, so we have to recognize first that it's there. We can't heal from it until we actually are honest with ourselves about it, right? We know this. This is part of, you know, the addiction phase, but we're all addicted to something period, end of story. So when we look at that addiction and we say, okay, well, where's the addiction and how do I switch it? It's looking for things that you can transition into, not making yourself wrong for it, not making yourself, uh, you know, bad or something's wrong with you because it's not. But allowing yourself to go through the process, that is the shadow work that we talk about in spiritual alchemy. That's the shadow that shows up within us. 
and we have to go through it in order to come to the other end, which is the awakening, right? And recognition. There are things that people tell me about myself, feedback that I had to get that hurt me that I was like, oh, but I'm like, okay, let me look at this. Why is it hurting me? Well, maybe because I feel like, yeah, maybe it's a part of me. Does it make me wrong? But how do I transition? How do I work with it? How do I recognize it when it shows up and then move through it? That's the importance. That's the distinction. And when we do this, we allow ourselves to understand, which is what's important when I want to get to, which is really juicy stuff. Um, we start to understand the patterns that exist within us, our archetypal patterns, okay? Which is important in the awakening of our souls or the awakening, I shouldn't say the awakening of our souls, awakening of our um how do I want to put it? Our understanding of this three-dimensional time space and who we are, basically. Because once you understand the energies that are working within you, you can work with them. Okay? And as you work with them, as you start to work with these energies and, and understand them, you start to become the master of your world. See, we're, we're trying to master the external world. That's not where mastery comes from. Mastery comes from within. See, think about all the great people on the planet who um, were prophets or um, enlightened beings. They mastered their internal world. Nothing can jar them because they knew who they were. I mean, right in the myth stories or in the stories, there were people who were um, shamed and blamed and and but they knew who they were and they had they held steadfast they stood with who they were they didn't they knew who they were basically they were nailed to crosses they were you know so you think about it and everybody was outraged but they just stood there steadfast they knew who they were and they understood that their internal world and what they were seeing externally was not separate from one another. That sickness of anger and frustration lives within them as well. They learned how to move through it. They learned how to accept it. They learned how to work with it. Not against it. They didn't fight it. They worked with it. And so, yes, at the end of the day, their body and flesh may have gone away, but what happened is their spirit or the truth stood behind because you can't get rid of it. See, that's what it is. People want people to shut up. So here we go into the next phase of what I want to talk about is the fact that people are waking up. Now, waking up in what way? Because people talk about wake up all the time. I do. I'm always like, wake up. Well, wake up to what exactly? Who you are. You, who you are is not the same as who I am, but it is, okay? We get to these paradoxes, and this is where things get really hard because in the three-dimensional time space, in the space that we're viewing, there's gonna you're going to bump up against these paradoxes, and those paradoxes don't know how to be resolved if you don't know how to do the work. It's like being the no-thing and the everything, when we empty our vessel, we have the potential to be everything. But if we have, how can we put something in our cup if it's already filled? We can't. So we empty our cup so that we can be filled with everything. But we have to be nothing in order to do that. So it's kind of like, how do we, how do we resolve? How do we um, c come together and bridge the gap between these paradoxes that we experience? Okay, not conceptually. Okay, everything I speak of is not just conceptually, it's actually experiential. What you're experiencing, how you're seeing the world. Not easy. Now, what happens when this happens is that you start to open up to the macrocosm. And as you connect into the macrocosm, as you wake up into the macrocosm, you start to bridge the gap between the macrocosm and the microcosm. As those two interconnect and interlock and you know who you are, that cannot be taken away. 
Now, what is happening is that people are waking up to their macrocosm. So when I say people are waking up, I don't mean they're like have awareness of like, oh, there's something wrong going on. And let me, you know, I'm talking about truly waking up to who they are. What is their myth story? What, what is, where is their stellar body? How are they connecting into it? Do they understand what the macrocosm is? How do they connect to the macrocosm? Again, not externally because it's, we look to the stars and say, well, that's the macrocosm. No, that lives in you. You are the macrocosm and the microcosm. The universe exists within you. See, your own universe. Understand your own universe. Understand your own internal universe and you shall understand the stars externally. You shall understand the cosmos. Your internal universe is the key to understanding that is the key. People are waking up to this and I believe what I feel, I something, I've, I'm not a prophet. <laughs> I could see patterns, but I do hold energy and there's times when I feel this, the radiated energy of something big about to happen. And I can feel it. Do I know what? No. I don't necessarily get glimpses into exactly how it's going to play out or what, but I do know that um, this awakening of these individuals, and they call it, you could go back and read about it. It's the 144,000 ascended masters. Um, the light bearers, the one that come to support in the raising of the consciousness where they shed light in the dark. So the darkness is going to come out a little bit more because more people are actually shining their stars. They're shining brightly. They're shedding light in the dark. And as they shed light in the dark, right, what's going to happen to the creatures that live in the dark? They're going to try to find a place to hide. But eventually there's going to be so much light. There's nowhere to hide. Now, when you illuminate, you illuminate darkness. And in the darkness, people don't want to see it. They're not used to it. They're afraid of it. So, yeah, we're going to see some weird, distorted shit. That's part of it. It's like the unconscious mind. It's not rational. And sometimes when we dream, we're like, what the hell was that, right? That's the unconscious. We're putting light into this unconscious darkness. And there's so many different ways it can play out. Okay, so we are waking up. The 144,000 masters, ascendant masters, illuminating, remembering, opening up, starting to work on their divine purpose, shedding light in the darkness. Why? For the healing of, for, for the healing, for healing, basically. So nothing to be worried, right, wrong, good, bad, nothing like that. It's just the process of alchemy. So I believe that something is going to happen. I can feel it in every cell of my body that there's something major happening. It started yesterday um, after I actually did a meditation. <laughs> um, and I could feel the vibrational frequency, something shifting something pretty, pretty major. So I don't know what we're going to see show up, but I do know that something's going to happen and it's going to be big enough that people will know. Um, so, and because I don't follow world news, um, I don't follow anything actually. I know nothing of what's going on in the world. Um, I just go off of my internal world. And when that something tells me something's up, something's up. And I know it is. I can feel it internally. So I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't even know what's going on in Ireland. I know you're in Ireland, but around, um, what kind of laws are going on there? Like, I haven't done any research. Um, you know, is it, are you guys like, you're Scotland. Sorry, not Ireland, Scotland. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Scotland. I want to go to Scotland. Maybe I'll meet you one day. If we're able to like get there without being. 
I don't know. Tell me what's going on there in Scotland. Um, yay, I'm very welcome. Is it a good place to retire? <laughs> or is are things going uh, uh, crazy over there? Um, yes, Scotland. Okay. So if you want to share, that would be great. I would love to know. Um, you're in fact, you're welcome to call in if you want to call in. <laughs> I don't always answer calls, but you're welcome to call in and chime in. And if you have something to say, say it. Um, I'm very pessimistic about the world in the next five to 10 years. Ah, you're the pessimist. Okay. Got it. And that's fine. Um, but uh, let's see. Communism, power, outrageous, starvation. Got it. Yeah. So, and it could. I mean, we're we're looking at it because we're shedding light on the darkness, right? And um, the darkness will do anything to stay in power. Sorcery um, is what has pretty much um, created the world that we see around us. It's been all manipulation and sorcery. Um, and, you know, as you get higher and higher, if you don't play their game, then you're out. And so people get so far in, they don't know how to get out. And they can't because they know that um, if they do, there's going to be, you know, consequences. So when you're initiated into some of these um, places, and into what we see now as pop culture, you know, I think about it, you know, this is, this is just think about it, right? It's not um, a conversation, a conspiracy theory, all that, but it's an opportunity for you to open your eyes and just kind of look at it. When you see that we are glorifying individuals um, for things that are, I don't even know, what are people glorifying people for? Like, because they can sing really well. And all of a sudden, they're putting them on pedestals like gods. They're not gods. They're humans. They're all humans. And they're all using um, language and they're using laws to manipulate and to um, coerce people into um, their agendas. That's just sorcery. Right? Now, here's the deal. I don't take it to, ooh, let's be afraid. No, I take it to, well, is that the conversation you really want to have? What conversations do you want to be a part of? Because there's a whole other dialogue that's happening like this one where we talk about how do we overcome this and how do we still do our great work and shed light where there's darkness? How do we stand as a pillar of light even in the darkness, even when the darkness is trying to um, suffocate our flame? How do we stand firm? Well, you got to know who you are. You've got to know who you are. And again, not at just the microcosm. The microcosm are the three-dimensional labels and titles that have been either given to us or that we have ascribed to. Okay, your title of, I don't know, director, your title of whatever it is, son, daughter, wife, husband, you know, title of whatever it is. We've ascribed to those citizen you know we can go on and on and on we've ascribed to those titles we've said yes to them that's just the microcosm that's not who you are okay that's part of the story is understanding how to navigate those titles or navigate the way that the other people are perceiving you the storyline that is playing out for you because you are projecting your self out into the world and as you project yourself out into the world, people are seeing that reflection and they're giving you feedback. That feedback is some sort of a, a it's kind of like an eye opener that they're telling you, oh, I need to maybe look at this. It's the feedback that we get from our own internal world. We're projecting it out. If we saw ourselves as projectors, if you saw your, let's just say your third eye as a projector, Okay, not your two eyes that are seeing it. Your your third eye, we could say it like this. This would be an easy way to say it. Your third eye is the projector and it's projecting out images. Okay, your eyes are viewing the projection. They're not creating it, but they're viewing it. They're seeing it and they're seeing it even backwards. 
okay? I have models to kind of show what it looks like and how and why we are seeing the world through this three-dimensional time space. And it's because of our eyeballs. That's why they say close your eyes and meditate, go internally, see what's inside. Something else you can do is don't look directly at the sun. Just put your forehead and third eye to the sun and then put your two eyeballs up to the third eye and you'll start to see the sun for what it is. Something that I do quite often, believe it or not. You'll start to see how the sun is penetrating into that space. Pretty cool stuff. Go try it and tell me what happens. You'll see the golden circle. The golden circle. When I was doing kundalini um, breath work, um, and we would do this one where we, we would put on our nose and close our ears and all this stuff, we would start to see, you'll see a circle, and it's the golden circle. Okay? The golden circle. That's your sun. See? We all have it in us. We are stars. We are star beings. How do you connect to that? That's the question. There is there There are many different ways to do it. There's not just one particular way. There are many ways. Good morning, Maru. Good morning, um, New Beginnings. J, J and R, good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'd say good morning, Christina. So as we continue on, and you guys, something is about to happen. Something I can feel it. I can just mark my words. I can feel it, right? There's something, there's, things are shifting. The storyline is shifting. More and more people are actually understanding this deeper esoteric wisdom. When this starts to happen, okay? Because we've had other times in history where these things started to happen. And when people start to ascend or start to wake up and remember who they are, um, of course, they come in to try to control that. And that's why I say something big's happening because I'm excited about all of the individuals, especially in my um, circle of individuals who are awakening to who they really are. Not just at the microcosm, but at the macrocosm, okay? So that's your big key, okay? There's a book I can recommend um, and I typically don't talk about it, but the reality is, is that some people will and some people won't. Um, the book is not cheap and I think one day it's gonna be out of print completely because um, it is what I feel are some, are some of the keys. Um, and But I'm gonna give it here and I typically don't, but I am because I feel like it's time. And everybody gets to work on this and illuminate the darkness so that the people that are stuck in darkness and don't know it have the opportunity to open up their eyes and to realize that they have a choice. See, some people don't even realize it, don't even know it. And that's why the star seeds or star beings or whatever you want to call us and the individuals working at this together in tandem um, is to do that just to shine light in darkness so that people that are in the dark and that were forced into darkness don't even know it, wake up and then go, oh, shoot, I have a choice. I have a choice. I can choose the light or I can choose the dark. And then it's up to them and they can choose. But we don't force people into the light. We just invite and they get either choose it or they don't. See, but the dark will force you into the dark. <laughs> They'll try to, but if you're a light being, you can never be dark, right? Okay, so the book is The Keys of Enoch. Now, it's not the one you guys are thinking about where people say, yeah, I've read the book of Enoch. Not that book. That's not what I'm talking about. It's The Keys of Enoch, The Keys of Wisdom. Let me get the book itself. And you know what? I'm going to show it to you on Facebook. And I'm going to tell you that this book now, I'm going to tell you right now, too, it's about a $400 book. <laughs> Why? Because they don't want everybody having it. And uh, it's probably going to be uh, out of print eventually. Okay. So it's Yahweh. So it's Y-H-W-H. -H. 
It's uh, the Book of Knowledge, the Keys of Enoch. Um, and this is one of the most profound books that you can get. You might read it and not know what the hell it's talking about. Um, and you might be kind of confused. But if you are looking to transcend, you're looking to open up the keys, you're looking to become a light worker, you're, you're kind of lost and not, not sure where to go, um, that is the next phase. Get the book. You can even read reviews on it. Just go on. It's a white book. Um, it's, well, it's kind of a cream color and it has like gold writing on it. Um, and it, it talks about, um, sort of the macrocosm, basically the pieces that they keep out away from us that they don't want us to know. So if you've been wondering what it is they're keeping from us, it's not conspiracies. Conspiracies are always going to be there. That's just a way for them to keep you um, entangled in a conversation, to keep you away from finding the real hidden secrets. Poetic, hi! Um, and so the this book is the sort of a map to the, the macrocosm. You read this book, um, you may not understand it, but if you're a true seeker and you're a true follower of, the, of spiritual alchemy and you're a practitioner of spiritual alchemy, um, you will come to understand. You'll, you'll be able to decode it for yourself and your myth story. Now, I will say this. You buy the book, you read it. Please be careful with it because it's powerful. It's um, go at your own pace. No need to rush things. Um, it's not a book that I will read on here ever, um, but it is. Of, I've added it to my list. Awesome. Which book? It is Yahweh, which is H W or Y H W H, and then it's the Book of Knowledge, and then the Keys of Enoch. So not the Book of Enoch. People hear that all the time, and that's not what it is. The Book of Enoch's a different book. Okay, this book. Um, is about a $400 book. Um, and it literally is probably going to go out of print. The more people that have their hands on this, I think the more they're going to start uh, telling, stop saying no. Or the price is going to go up so high that no one will have access to it. I tell you that right now. When I bought it, it was about 120 So it's the price is going up on it. And um, you may be able to find a used one a little bit cheaper, but I'm almost guarantee that eventually it's going to be so costly. No one will have it. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, if you don't understand it um, and you want support through it, um, that's where I um, will support those individuals who are truly committed to the work. Um, and that is my offer. So for those of you on here, because I think it's will be the only time I ever offer it was meant for you. Um, and that's that. Um, I don't give everything away all the time. Because why? Well, because people will come to this wisdom when they're real, when they're really, really, really committed to the work. It'll, it'll naturally fall into their place. It's kind of like, you know how the universe works, right? Where you're like, I'm ready for my next lesson. And then boom, shows up and you're like, whoa. Like everybody's, it's still magical to me. I still go, whoa. Like you think of someone and they pop up and you're like, wow, I was just thinking about you. So if those of you who are interested in the book, buy the book and are start to read it and go, what the hell is this? Because I'm sure, you know, some of you might. Um, then... What I would like to do is uh, support individuals in um, perhaps a study group. But you can email me if that's the case and that's what you decide to do. Again, it's it, it can be an investment for some people, right? $500 book, $600 book, $400 book. And they're kind of going, what am I getting? <laughs> you can always sell it back if you're just like, this is not for me. You'll know, though. You will know that I can tell you one thing about this book. I have put it in front of people and the people that uh, will not touch it. It's interesting. It's, it's just quite interesting. I'll be like, maybe this is a book you should look into and they don't even touch it. 
They won't touch it. It's not for them. Okay, so you'll know if it's for you. Okay, you'll understand. You'll know. Um, and I can tell you right now that as more people have this information and people start to wake up because it's time, like there's no more waiting. Okay, it's just not, it's not. Um, that some major shifts will be happening. We don't need to do our work by force. We don't need to do our work by, um, you know, fighting back. There's a greater work at play. Okay. There's a greater um, way to connect into that to shift the storyline. And we can shift the storyline. Words aren't going to do it at this point. See, we're tangled up in their language right now. We're tangled up. We're tangled up in their in their rhetoric, right? So if we looked at their rhetoric, we're, that's what we're tangled in right now. And you can't, it's almost like I had told um, a professor a long time ago, and here, but I told a professor a long time ago is I wanted to get my PhD in organizational leadership. In my mind, what I wanted to do was to go in and change organizational models to honor the sacred feminine because we're in a patriarchy. So I said, well, you know, the, the whole entire system is based on patriarchy. You know, let's let's shift it so that we honor both systems. And how can we do that? And um, and I said, you know, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to trick them. You know, that's what my mind was. I'm going to trick them. And he said, you can't fight a virus with the virus. And I said, oh. So that made me say, OK, I, it's kind of like even what Einstein said, right? You can't solve the problem with the same mind that created it. If you're in their rhetoric, if you're in their storyline, you cannot solve the problem through that. That's never going to work. Okay, I hope you guys are hearing what I'm saying. I hope you're really understanding and letting it land for you. Because people are trying to find their remedy through the same same place that or the same mind that created it. That's not where the remedy is. Okay, the resolve how do we remedy what we see as a distorted, um, the or the way our life looks right now? It's distorted. Everything's kind of weird and wonky. And we feel like we're in some sort of like weird illusion, which we are. But it's because we're in their rhetoric. We're in their language. We speak their language. They programmed us into their language. They raised us into their language. They raised us into seeing the world from their worldview, from their lens, from their perspective. And by there, I mean the ivory tower, which is all of this acad uh, academia basically has created it in tandem with all of these systems and it's penetrated outwards. And so literally we're trying to find the resolution within that. Well, it created it. We can't use their same rhetoric. We can't use the same language. See the, the tower of Babel, why the tower of Babel? Because once you start to wake up, you create your own language. Okay, so the language that's being created, the, the way that we discuss it cannot be seen by others or heard. You don't find the remedy within the system. Okay, your own rhetoric. That means you have to know who you are. You have to understand your language. You have to know your myth story. You have to understand your microcosm, macrocosm. Can it happen a little faster than it w did in the past? Yes. You know why? Because more and more people are waking up. That's why. So now we have illuminaries, right? We have people who are illuminated. And as they constellate together, as all these illuminaries work around the world together, they're starting to illuminate the other stars. And the other stars start to illuminate other stars. And before you know it, you have a council. And that council starts to illuminate um, darker places, baby stars, stars that are maybe new to this whole entire system. And we illuminate those. And then those that want to come to the light and be light workers will, those who want to stay in the dark will. And there's nothing right, wrong, good, or bad about either one of them. You just know who you are in the storyline. But their rhetoric isn't going to, you're not going to find your resolve in their rhetoric, okay? It's just not going to happen. You're just going to go in circles.
and then you're going to be what they call the nines and the nines get stuck in their own storyline over and over and over again they don't know how to get out they end up in the same spot same pattern same fractal pattern not understanding why they're seeing the same thing well it's because you have to transition okay it's the end of a cycle and it could be the end of your karmatic patterns as well and closing up those loopholes that are around you and then you start to project right your true authentic self into the world and as you project you might lose people because they don't want to be illuminated they don't want it <laughs> it's not for them and then you draw in the people that do and then you work with them and that's how this work works okay so there's the book uh for those i know poetic you have my information um jnr is what i don't know if you want to do it king manual i don't know if you want to do it uh baram i don't know if you want to do it it's fine either way because i do it regardless that's what i do every day all day as you guys know um and uh i've been in this journey by myself for a very long time um and uh, but I know that it's time for individuals to join in and start to um, remember who they are and really tap into that and not um, somebody else's storyline, but your own and start giving your healing gifts to the world and your medicine to the world. The world needs you. OK, the world is in need of your services and your light. OK. The world is waiting for your light to shine and illuminate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it because I say okay? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So it's like one of my favorite words. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, I really want to connect and come back out of my shell again. Yes. Good. Good, good, good. And that's okay. We go into our shells and that's perfectly fine. As long as we know why. Right. The hermit is not a bad thing. I do that all the time. Um, the hermit after this show believe it or not i'm the hermit so um let's work together uh if you guys have any questions comments concerns i'm also doing a facebook live event um that um i need to have a nation for a while absolutely um you can contact me spirit and brew at gmail.com you can go to my facebook at facebook uh it's um oh spirit and coffee talk one um on facebook and uh i'm going to be doing a time management to um i'm listening from gh 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 i don't know what gh is i don't know um you can um go online and then i'm going to be doing on october 11th a two-hour training it's um I'm calling it time management, but it's really not time management. It's for alchemy of time and how time works and how we can get out of time loops and um, start to recreate new time for ourselves. So you're all welcome to be a part of that. Um, I'm going to be doing more and more of those. Oh, God. Sorry. Okay. Awesome. Hi, from Ghana. How are you? so there you have it um i love you guys so much keep doing the great work i'm super proud of all of you i i absolutely love you guys and you know you guys are here to do the great work we're here to do it together lock arms and illuminate and remember not not using their rhetoric that's not how we do this you look at all of the great sages they didn't use their storyline they didn't use their their um language see so there you go um yes if you have a question you can email me at spirit and brew at gmail.com um spirit and brew here i'll put it on here great show always <laughs> spirit spirit and oops Yes, brew at gmail. Yes, and also um, I will be um, spirit. I just typed it for you. I hope you got it. Okay, so um, you're welcome. So uh, yes, Baram, and I will be getting with you so that we can do uh, the our your podcast. Um, I think I might have some time today or tomorrow as well. So hopefully 
you have time today or tomorrow. Okay, so have a great day. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.